Okay, let's get started. We are copying an example problem into our math app, MathKiwi, Kiwi, to solve. Down here, we have a keyboard that allows us to enter things like limits, that sort of thing. I already use a lot of keyboard shortcuts, but if you are just starting out, you can use our virtual keyboard. Alright, this is the example we are going to solve. Let's take the first step. What can we say about this example? N approaches infinity. So both the numerator and the denominator approach infinity. This is a very typical example of a method I call factoring out the highest power. I recommend factoring out the highest power in the numerator separately and the highest power in the denominator separately. There are many variations of this method, like dividing the numerator and denominator instead of factoring out by the highest power overall, or dividing by the highest power in the denominator, there are many different variations here. They all essentially boil down to the same thing. I talk about this more in my course. Here, I'm immediately taking the first step. I'm factoring out the highest power from all the terms in the numerator and the highest power in the denominator. Let's look at the numerator at the top. The highest power, we'll agree, without a doubt, is n to the third, so I'm factoring out n to the third. Since I factored out n to the third from this term, this term, and this term, we'll have to divide these terms by n to the third. n to the third divided by n to the third. I'm writing right away that it's 1 plus. I'm not going to simplify in my head here. I'm just going to write it out. 3n squared divided by n to the third. I'm not dividing in my head, just writing it out. And the same here, 1 over n to the third. Okay, take a look at the numerator. Do you understand how this numerator transformed into this? Why is there a 1 here, for example, and some fractions here? The 1 is there because there was already n to the third here, and I kind of divided n to the third by n to the third in my head, and that's why I got 1 here. I didn't do anything in my head with this. I just rewrote 3n squared over n to the third. Plus, there was a 1 here over n to the third. I'm doing the same thing analogously in the denominator. Analogously, but not exactly the same, because the highest power in the denominator is n to the fourth. So, I factor out n to the fourth. And what's left here? n to the 4th divided by n to the 4th is 1 plus 8n squared divided by n to the 4th, I divide by n to the 4th, plus 2 divided by n to the 4th. Right, do you understand? I didn't do anything here. I just factored out n to the 3rd from these 3 components at the top in the numerator, and at the bottom from these three components I factored out n to the fourth, resulting in something like this. Well, you can shorten it a bit further, right? n to the third and n to the fourth will be shortened. Aha, uh -huh, let's send it to the application. There it is. It approved it for us in green. The step is correct, right? By the way, if it were incorrect, if I made a mistake somewhere, something would come out in red here. Let's move on n to the third and n to the fourth will be shortened. In what way? At the top, well, it will simply be 1, right? Maybe I'll even write it like that. And at the bottom there will be n. This is clear, simple shortening of powers, somewhere in the previous grades of education. Here n squared and n to the third will be shortened, agreed? n will remain here. Here also n squared and n to the fourth will be shortened. n squared will remain here. And that's it. We are sending it. Correct step. 
Do you understand now what happened here? I didn't do anything. I just shortened n to the third and n to the fourth. Something like this remained. Here I shortened n squared n to the third, here n squared n to the fourth, right? What's next? Look at the top. There's this form one times something, a bit strange. Well, maybe let's write it like this. One times something is just that something, right? Let's write it this way. Not much more can be done. Not much more can be done here at all. We need to immediately determine what it approaches and how. I showed this in my limits course, and now I'll just repeat it slowly. If we have a situation in limits where we have a constant on top, divided by something that approaches infinity. Imagine that this n approaches infinity, meaning n is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Here we have three hundreds, three thousands, three millions, three trillions, three quadrillions, and so on, and so on, and so on. This fraction, if there's a constant divided by infinity, a constant divided by infinity, always approaches zero, so this approaches zero, and this also approaches zero. So we have one plus zero plus zero, the top approaches one, so a constant. And what about the bottom? This goes to zero, for the same reasons as on top, a constant, even if it were a large, very large constant, much larger than 8, divided by something diverging to infinity, approaches 0. So here we have 1 plus 0 plus 0, this approaches 1, but here we also have n diverging to infinity, so the whole bottom doesn't converge to any specific number, so we actually have infinity times 1, which is infinity. So the whole situation here is that we have 1 over infinity, right? And that converges to zero. Why? Because a constant over infinity always converges to zero, right? I'm not explaining all these things from scratch. I heartily encourage you to take my limits course where I do that. Here, I'm only solving this specific example. And in this specific example, the result will be 0. This limit is equal to 0. This whole fraction converges to 0. If you were to substitute successive numbers, getting larger and larger and larger, this whole expression would become smaller and smaller and smaller. It would tend towards 0. Let's do something for fun. Let's make a mistake. Okay, here, I'll write that it equals 1, which is an incorrect result. I repeat, an incorrect result. And why will this be fun? Because we'll ask our Kiwi bird why this is an incorrect result. He'll definitely come up with something for us here. He'll help us. Just give him time to think. And there it is. He's thought about it. Let's read how he suggests that we wrote that it tends to 1. But there's a small mistake, right? Actually, he repeated everything I explained. That all these components tend to zero, so when simplified, it essentially remains 1 over n. And 1 over n also tends to zero, not to 1, right? So let's correct ourselves. And that's the end of the problem. This is a very typical popular method of factoring out the highest power. That's what I call it. Thanks. Let's move on to the next example. And thanks Kiwi, to you too. Thanks for the hint.